Good evening and welcome. I am Spock. Are you sure? Quiet. Well, I'm glad you got that straight. Hmm. I see. May I continue? Please be my guest. Are you inviting me to your residence? Uh, no, Spock. It's just a quaint colloquialism, not an invitation. You are so literal. Yes, I do make an effort to be precise in language. I know, I know. As former science officer of the Starship Enterprise, Vulcan ambassador... Oh, they to already know all of that. I mean, just get on with it. I am making an effort to that end, but I am constantly being interrupted. Do you mind if I just jump in here, just to kind of move things along? Be my guest. <laughs> A quaint colloquialism. The last time Spock and I met, which was in fact the first time we met, Spock tricked me into saving Earth. Inaccurate. To be more specific, he contrived a way to get around the Prime Directive by having me carry the water, do the deed, lug the load. What Q did, in fact, was to divert an asteroid from its deadly course, thereby saving every life form on this planet from extinction. Ah. <laughs> Let's not get maudlin. In a minute, you'll have me in tears. It is certainly not my intention to embarrass you. I only speak the truth. And when the deed was done... I don't want a medal. We agreed to partake of a meal. Just a little discreet plaque in the lobby of the United Nations. <laughs> Which we did at a nearby restaurant. Yes, and a sensational eatery it was, too, I might add. Yes, Earth food does have a way of comfortably expanding the abdominal wall. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> what? I was agreeing with you, like you never burp? For me, it is not an elementary imperative. Yeah, sure, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. What was that dish you ordered? Seaweed. Really? Here I thought it was Swamp Thing. <laughs> what was Chekhov eating? Chekhov was eating Holia Dietz. Gross. Quite an interesting dish, actually. Chicken and a rope of garlic bulbs in aspic. Count me out. Mm. Mr. Chekhov has a weakness for food from his native land. Yeah, gargantuan appetite, too. It was like watching Peter the Great devour Sweden. Oh. <laughs> that would be an exaggeration. Got his autograph? Want to see it? <laughs> and he didn't make me shove an asteroid into the Crab Nebula like some people I could mention. We have been over this territory before, but since you insist on being boorish, let me refresh your memory. One, you interrupted my lecture this evening warning Earth of an asteroid collision. And what for? An autograph. Two... Relax, will you? You act like I shook you down for your entire Swiss bank account. <laughs> Perhaps you didn't notice how the audience cheered when I arrived. Two, you then co-opted the podium and insisted on playing verbal games. Known in the trade as comic relief, something you desperately need, but please, do go on. Three, you reneged on your promise to leave the premises once I graciously gave you my autograph. Objection. Overruled. <laughs> if I had left you alone, who would have stopped the asteroid saving your precious Earth? You tricked me into staying so technically you wouldn't violate your fusty old prime directive. Which brings us to four. You insisted on tagging along to a dinner with my friends and spent the evening dominating the entire conversation. I will have you know my friends came to see me from a long distance. It's all about you, isn't it? Fascinating. I had the opposite impression. The cheek. The absolute cheek. I notice you've conveniently overlooked a little something in your recap of tonight's events. Yes, I did. I overlooked your obsequious, ingratiating, sycophantic prattlings, starting with Lieutenant Uhura and miniskirts. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? She should wear them. She's got the stems. I say flaunt them, baby, yeah! <laughs> 
And as if that were not enough, you went on to goad Scotty into thinking he had the best voice this side of Inverness. <laughs> which prompted him to stand on the table and sing Loch Lomond in that impenetrable burr. So he missed an octave here and there. Big hairy deal. Mm. And just when I thought the floor show was finished, you reeled in Mr. Chekhov practically sitting in his lap, I might add, by agreeing with all his chauvinistic misconceptions. I thought he was fascinating. <laughs> really, I did. Hmm. That archery, flying buttresses, and Boston cream pie were invented by the Russians? So he's got a thing for Mother Russia. Jeez. And why did you go to those extremes? Autograph. Hey, it's called having fun. In some circles, perhaps. You know, you ought to develop a hobby besides taunting me. You're jealous, that's what it is. Your friends like me, and you're pissed. <laughs> hey, I am speaking to you. Pleasurable as this has been, the hour moves on. Well, perhaps, but I'm still waiting. The prerogative of the idol. <laughs> no, you're supposed to say waiting for what? Very well, I will humor you. Waiting for what? For a smidgen of thanks for the thing you didn't mention. The small favor I did for Earth. The thing I did, and might I add, on an empty stomach. Which, which thing? The thing! <laughs> if you're referring to diverting the asteroid, I have indeed mentioned it, and a formal thank you will be issued for your services. And now... Can I ask you something? Can I prevent you? Why are you always in such a bloody rush? I mean, do you ever preambulate, confabulate, postulate, any lates at all? Occasionally, I ululate. <laughs> but always, always alone. <laughs> My cruiser awaits. It's not red, I hope. Meter maids love to paper red vehicles. It is cloaked. Cloaked? Oh, rain cloaked? Cloaked and daggered? <laughs> Anyway, all this vehicle stuff is so weird, since I have no need for any conveyance, cloaked or uncloaked. I am entirely edified by this shard of information, and now, please let me get back to my interplanetary relic. Fine, fine. Far be it from me to keep you from whatever calamity in the universe you feel called upon to interrupt. Good night, then. No, oh, Sparky. <laughs> Yes? Now, can't we at least shake hands? I mean, shaking hands is the proper way to end an evening. It's gentlemanly, manly. Why? Why? Well, well, because. Because why? Oh, never mind. Because it is human? Oh, very well, then. Ah! Oh! Jeez! Ah! Oh! God, you're crushing my hand! Uncle! Oh, wow, what's the matter with you? I have no idea. Something just happened. There was a power change which dimmed the lights. Yes, I noticed that in my hand. I mean, you're really killing me. I said, Uncle. I need not remind you, we have no bloodline in common. <laughs> Therefore, the appellation Uncle does not apply, booby. Thank you for the genealogical lesson. It's amazing how you multitask, Spock, verifying family trees while at the same time inflicting pain. I didn't think Vulcans went in for arm wrestling. We don't. It's a shame, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a contact sport to make the blood sing in your veins, you know, make you feel alive. Alive. <laughs> the hills are alive. <laughs> Are you? Are you on Prozac or something? I don't know. Well, get a grip. Ah! Spock! Spock! Are you getting a load of this? Yes. It's amazing. The twinkling of stars, the infinity of space, the backdrop of eternity. What is? It's heavenly! Did I say that? The hall, the podium, the audience, where are they? Potty break? <laughs> They're gone. They're all gone. So they are. Well, 
<laughs> easy come, easy go. Look! <laughs> Look at your feet! What do you see? Dirt! Ah, dirt, so basic, so elemental. Have you ever noticed the big cats of the Serengeti reveling in dirt? Oh, zoologists, too. Is there no end to your talent? Well, here's a teeny tiny question you might care to answer, Mr. Science. What just happened to the people that we were talking to? Well, we've already established that. They have disappeared. Oh, another brilliant observation. And what about the cars and the restaurants and the sidewalks? Where do you suppose they went? The same place as Zeno's arrow? Oh, oh good. Yeah. Glad to know they're somewhere. All uh, tucked in neat and tidy, I hope. You misunderstand me. I said the people appear not to be here. If they were here, we would be standing before them. And if we were standing before them, they would not appear to have disappeared. <laughs> It's only logical. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed, thank you. You've really put my mind to rest. I should never have ever let you pick that cheap wine. We should, <laughs> we should look around, you know. You never know, we might find some little green men. <laughs> How's your hand, by the way? It seems to be recovering. Mm. <laughs> as fragile as Venetian glass, yes. What is that marvelous expression, see Venice and die? I don't care for that expression. <laughs> Nor do I care for your bringing it up at this moment. A, we are not in Venice. B, my hand is not made of glass. No, of course not. I was using analogy as a yummy means of self-expression, Nespa. <laughs> I Nespa to absolutely nothing. <laughs> Why are you exhibiting this strange behavior? Evidently something of a turn in my nature. I do not seem quite myself, do I? Nor do you seem to appreciate that one moment we were standing before an audience, and the next moment we are... Hurtling through space. I think Copernicus beat you to the punch on that one. Hurtling through space at an accelerating speed. Hurtling through space at an accelerating speed. Is this some sort of ditty? Should I be wildly coming up with the next E-I-E-I-O? <laughs> because I'm not happy when I hear words like hurtling, accelerating, and such. Can you pinpoint a location? Major cross streets? Landmarks? coordinates in the Milky Way. Hmm. Where are we? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? You know, there are support groups for people like you. <laughs> Never mind, once again, it is up to me to get us out of here. Why not try wiggling your nose? <laughs> Cute. We need a location report. That is what you do, isn't mm -hmm. it? We need to know what is happening. Well, relying on pure olfactory sense, I would identify this dirt we're standing on as chondritic, containing magnesium, aluminum, silicon, calcium, and iron, and perhaps a touch of kryptonite. Kryptonite. <laughs> kryptonite is a fictitious element. If you say so. Don't agree with me. I hate it when you agree with me. It is not you. It, it, it... Bingo. Bingo. Did you just say bingo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you are beginning to frighten me, Spock. Now, where are we? The dirt that we're... The dirt is immaterial. We are in need of clarity. Why do I always have to be the one to figure things out? <laughs> Why do I always have to be the responsible party when everyone else is having fun? It seems so unbalanced, so, so unfair. You know, you might be right. And I might be at another time willing to discuss the relative nature of fairness, but not now. <laughs> You see, at present, I am concerned. I am very concerned that we are, well, I mean, how can I put this? It is clear to me that we have found... Please. 
No more references to Zeno's arrow. We have a major situation here, and I have a sneaking suspicion. Oh, you worry too much. Worrying is not in my nature. What I am is curious. One minute, we were sharing a nice burp together, and the next moment, we are standing on regolith. On what, what's regolith? Dust, swept up in the early days of the solar system and held together by the gravity of its own mass. Like your personality. <laughs> Now there's the old cue. <laughs> I'm glad you're not wrapped up totally in fear. It's, it's quite oppressive when the person you're traveling with is phobic, you know? Grips the armrests, uses up all the barf bags. Oh. <laughs> Get a wind of this, baby, will you? Fasten your seatbelt. Here we go. <laughs> Fascinating. We have just experienced an increase in the angular momentum of our axis inclination. <laughs> Did I just say that? Bingo! <laughs> Stop using that word. Why? Because it makes me feel like we are in the basement of St. Paul the Apostle. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nothing so parochial. We are hurtling through space at breakneck speed. In short, a joyride of cosmic proportions. Whee! <laughs> May I remind you that our situation is perilous? All indications lead me to believe that we are on an asteroid. Get out of town. <laughs> did I say that? Yes, you did. And we are out of town. We are standing on an asteroid headed with due diligence towards Earth. Does that ring any bells? Oh, the thrill of it all. <laughs> Tell me, not that it matters, but when do you suppose we might expect the encounter? <laughs> the encounter? <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry. Very soon. Within the hour? Less, more like half an hour. <laughs> Good, really. I'm glad I didn't overpack. <laughs> At the speed we are traveling, accounting for gravitational deviation, although I do not know the critical variation of density, we should encounter Earth in 34.54 minutes. Did I just say that? <laughs> say it like it is, bro. We're gonna crash. <laughs> We're gonna go bump in the night big time. <laughs> Spock, you are starting to sound like... No, that is illogical. <laughs> Put it this way. Have you experienced any recent changes in your diet? Your exercise? Stool's normal? <laughs> How do you feel? Wow! I feel cool, na 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 na. I jump in the pool, na 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 na. I feel whole, na 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 na. So cool, so whole, I'm digging this roll, ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> I don't mean to impugn your newfound feelings, Mr. Gassy. But I liked you better sullen. Give me a break. I was a pill. <laughs> oh, fabulous day. If we do not extricate ourselves from this present situation, you will be able to enjoy the past tense for the rest of eternity. So? Do something about it. You're up to it. Try the finger-snapping bit again. Look, I am not going to hide it. Things are not 100% with my onboard computer. <laughs> really? Really? But you're good. You've got talents galore. And impersonation, for instance, you've got me down to a T. Yes, and you have me down to a... to a Q. Why are you doing this, Spock? I have heard that imitation is flattery, but I am not flattered. Well, check the mirror, baby, the reflection. The Espejo, look at yourself. You are a first-class, number one world champion loose cannon. <laughs> hey, feel like a game of catch? Catch? Hardly. There are some intelligent questions to be asked at this juncture. One, how did we get here? Two, why are we here? And three, what can be done about our circumstances? I hear you, but what's a body to do? Hmm? <laughs> 
Hey, we could scrape together a little regolith, pack it with water, and make a dynamite fastball. We do not have water. Will you spit at a prayer, huh? How's that? He's pointing, ladies and gentlemen. He's pointing to right field. The babe has got to hit a home run for that little boy in the hospital. <laughs> Is that really how I appear to you, like someone with morbid attention deficit disorder? Uh, <laughs> you appear willful, spoiled, undisciplined, narcissistic. Oh, please, hold nothing back. And fun. Fun? Fun. I assure you, I do not suffer from that imbalance in personality that makes one jaunt through the universe with no other purpose than to enjoy oneself. Why am I talking like this? <laughs> is this some Vulcan trickery? Is this, is this something you learned as a tot, co-opting someone else's personality? Questions, questions, questions. You know, this asteroid could be a great place for a theme park. Thrill rides. Thrill rides and dinosaurs, huh? No, 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 no. All right, that's been done to death. Now, wait a minute. What about ancient Greece? What about recreating the first Olympic Games? We could charge a fortune. Two major obstacles spring to mind. Mr. Negative, you're just jealous because you didn't think of it first. You know, they told Edison to forget about the light bulb, Alexander Graham Bell the telephone, Orville and Wilbur Wright to forget about Would you Howard please, Fermi La Bouche? Fermi La Bouche. <clears throat> I need some peace and quiet to figure this out. Relax. Love will steer the stars. I demand that you come to grip with our predicament. No, no. Gripping's tough on the gut, and I'm already suffering from dinner. No wonder you had seaweed. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You had seaweed. You're right. No, you're not. No, I had ribs. No, no, no. It was moi. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it, hold it. You're right. I had the seaweed. Maybe I had a nibble or two from your plate. Does this, like, matter? This might be the most important discussion that we ever have. Great. Now, let's see. I didn't have an appetizer, but I did have an extra helping of something else. And Why are you staring at me like that? I think you know. I don't. And anyway, it's rude. Oh, I don't care. Steer to your heart's content. All I did was shake your hand. The very reason Vulcans adopted the salute rather than risk prestidigitatory contact. Elitist snob. Speak for yourself, Bubbola. You are not just doing an impression of me, are you? I don't think I should answer that without my lawyer present. You were the one who stuck his hand out first. Think of that. You shook back. It could have been you. And what would be my motive for taking us on this suicide trip? Motive? Motive? Do I look like an acting coach? <laughs> you, think, you think this is my idea, being stranded on an asteroid with an interstellar buffoon turned poopy? It's all you're doing, isn't it? You never liked me. This is some punishment, isn't it? Some Federation revenge, getting even with old Q. Don't forget the strawberries, Captain Quig. Yeah! That's right, what happened to the strawberries? <laughs> Woo! Get a grip, baby, get a grip. Get a grip, get a grip, I must get a grip. boy. Humor me for a moment, Spock. <laughs> Mustn't expect miracles now. I really do think I know what is going on here. Ha! Ah, a revelation. I heard it from my own mouth. No, that's not quite right. I heard it from yours. Spock, wh wh what am I trying to say? Come on, like you don't know? Well, let me see. I'm okay, you're okay? Mm -mm, no, no, no. Um, I'm you, and you're me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're kidding. <laughs> no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. What are you doing there? I don't go in for that stuff. No, no, no. I am checking to see if I'm wearing your underwear. Well? Nasty. I demand that you release me. Do you hear? Demand's getting lots of use in your vocab these days. This is outrageous. You can say that again. This is outrageous. <laughs> Amen! 
You know, I actually feel my horizons expanding. In the direction we are heading, they are in fact shrinking. No, no, no. It's it's the feeling, you see. The senses singing, ringing. It's 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 a second childhood, or a first. <laughs> if you want to be honest, I'm a tingle. Doesn't that give you pause? The next pause we have will be eternal. Why? Why? Why, you ask? Look out in front of you. Do you have any idea what it feels like to do a head-on with a planet? Who do you think will win? Let me try a different tack. How about being a tingle somewhere else, Mr. Feelings? Perhaps skiing. Perhaps getting a massage. Ah, now there's a suggestion. Let's blow this rock and go somewhere super. Come on, let's go. How can I put this in a way that you will understand? I am no longer in my own skin, much less my own underwear. <laughs> so? Tell me that you are having sport with me. Tell me that I am not that dense. Huh? I am without my powers. Oh. Right. <laughs> you think I have them? Some of them. Mm -hmm. The most irritating ones, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're right. You're right. Good thinking. I can do this. I can get us out of here. Why didn't I think of that? Are we there yet? No, of course not. We are still on an asteroid, which means we are 32,451.49 miles closer to our demise. Mm, bummer. <laughs> I was thinking spa, spa, spa. Nothing. Do you think that you can become me just like that? Do you think that being Q is just traipsing about in drag, acting uppity, and snapping one's fingers all the time? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> well, I agree, it does look like that a little. But I assure you, there is great skill in being Q. It is a way of life, a commitment to craft, a proficiency of purpose, a dedication to a higher ethos. Oh, please, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> What's the trick? It's all in the wrist, and don't forget the eyebrow. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Now, center your being. Think Yosemite. How about Club Med? <laughs> Fine, Club Med. Mm -hmm. Are you a member? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was just asking. Well, how was I? Nothing. You are a dud. A big dud. I know. Think 777. It's 911 for the continuum. Mm. <laughs> well? Static. You must think more logically. Clear the pathways. Next thing you'll be telling me is to hoist a giant solar sail and have the sun push us, right? A sail? Hmm. A sail is an idea with merit, but we do not have time. Mm -hmm. Please concentrate. Mm -hmm. Fix your attention on an essential truth. I'm fresh out of essential truths. Have you got any handy? Yes, in fact, I do. Life is not reductionist. Excellent. So deep. What's it mean? Life is holistic. Taking apart the watch to find out what makes it tick does not tell you as much as just watching the watch. He gads. <laughs> Am I as boring as I sound? <laughs> you are so profound and a little boring, I could weep. <laughs> would you care to illustrate? Yes, as a matter of fact, I would. Let us say that you are in a barnyard and you see a bunch of feathers, a yellow beak, scaly toes, and the thing goes, buck, buck, buck. What is it? Dinner. <laughs> that is my line. It was your line, but it came out of my mouth. Now, where are you going with this poultry metaphor? It was a chicken joke. 
I was attempting a chicken joke. Spock was attempting a chicken joke. You are the worst nightmare for a stand-up. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Bubby. <laughs> I am beginning to see why Kirk bagged all the babes. That's what you think. <laughs> Any guesses why you're not in touch with the continuum? Solar flares, how do I know it will pass? It's passed, all right. Your powers have passed on to me. I see no evidence of that. I feel pulses in my auditory canal and an inexplicable sensation of having two dozen problems in my mind simultaneously. Not to mention that my sense of humor has changed. Tell me about it. <laughs> Vulcan humor is internalized, subtle, constrained. Like a straitjacket. Whereas continuum humor is pratfalls, riddles, and fart jokes. <laughs> Do you think that you are a member of my club? I do. However, it's no longer your club, it is mine. Show me. Get us off this asteroid. How about something easier? Very well, get me a Tums. My stomach is in turmoil. Mm. Now that's more like it. Those ingredients are aluminum hydroxide, magnesium carbonate, semethicone, Sodium alginate, sorbitol alginate, sorbitol Mumbling alginate, ingredients will not help. <laughs> Knowing your times table did not build the pyramids. I know that, I know that. In my mind's eye, the and acid components whirl around in a kind of a circle. Getting them to mix would seem to be some kind of trickery. We call it a method, thank you, and I cannot believe that we are wasting this precious time. I'm willing to learn. Wasting time that could be better spent applying ourselves to more productive solutions. T minus 21.54 minutes. Oh, God. Will you please, please lighten up? My weight is immaterial. <laughs> and might I add on an observational note, suddenly being inside your brain is like being inside the brain of a mosquito. If I weren't feeling so wunderbar, I would tell you to buzz off. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> Onomatopoetically, that would be the sound of a bee, not a mosquito. <laughs> Was that pedantic or what? <laughs> Spock, there must be some benefit in being you, but I have not yet experienced it. Death is staring me in the face for the first time in my existence, and I am staring back as an anal retentive. Oh. <laughs> hey, don't get all depressed on me. If death is our fate, let's embrace it. Reach out and hug it. Give it our undivided attention. Don't keep doing the timepiece thing, please. It's boring. <laughs> hey, you know what we could do? I hesitate to inquire. We could bond. <laughs> bond? I find that highly impractical and messy. <laughs> a better idea would be to send a mental SOS to my, your, our. our brethren in the continuum. They might attempt a rescue. Last place I want to be is here. Oh. What? What did I say? Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm just, I'm just very, very emotional right now. Okay, it's okay. I mean to say solo, perduto, abandonato is way, way underplaying how I'm feeling at this moment. <laughs> Can't we just, you know, appreciate this time together? We might not have it again. Please don't look at your watch. All right. All right. I cannot speak for you, but my appreciation quotient is used up. I've had quite enough of this drama. I know what you mean, but face it, Euripides and Aeschylus would have had a great time with this plot. <laughs> Need I remind you, the Greek playwrights took pains to cast some light on a theme of major significance. I see no theme here, only plot. Well, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's do theme search 101. Very well, if it will help illuminate the reason for our presence here. Okay. 
Okay. How about this? Suppose we're two intergalactic pirates shackled together in the belly of a boat. We are not piratical. Pirates take people, treasure, what have you, that do not belong to them. Whoever has brought us to this place, they would be the pirates. All right, all right already. We're not pirates. Are you happy? We're not freaking pirates, all right? All right? But we are shackled together, all right? In a manner of speaking. I'm trying to make up a story, something that, like what's happening to us. Maybe it could, we could, it could help us figure out why we're here. Do I have your permission to continue? If you insist. Okay, okay. Are we still in the belly of a boat? Yes, yes. Will you be still? Being still in the belly of a boat at sea would be nigh on to being impossible. Oh, give me a break, will you please? I'm trying to solve a problem here. And I am endeavoring to enter your metaphor. Fine, fine. Endeavor away. Back to the story. Angry clouds gather, hanging in the sky, heavy and black as anvils. The sea swells 15, 20, 30 feet high. Lightning strikes the mast. It comes crashing down. Everyone is thrown overboard, except... I thought we were alone on the boat. Never mind. <laughs> the boat begins filling fast with water, swirling, inky dark. Ah, night. So much more compelling, these dramas that happen at night. Shh, please. I'm getting to the good part now. Are we still shackled? Yes, yes, we're still shackled. If you're trying to make a point, you have. I'm sorry. I cannot help myself. Allegories are difficult for me. The very least you could do is be empathetic. I know what you mean, but as you, I can't empathize. It's not in my nature. I understand. Do continue. The water reaches our ankles, then our knees. It's freezing. Our breath comes out in foggy gouts. We look at one another. We writhe and twist against the shackles. The big shackles. Thank you. Oh. Causing our wrists to bleed copiously. The water creeps up to our chins. We stretch our necks like hungry little birds, and still it rises. The water. Soon, oh so soon, we'll breathe this water for our last breath. We look up to the starry night and fix our gaze on a single star. So distant. Imagining ourselves there. Calm. Assured. We cannot open our mouths. The water will rush in. The agony. Oh, the sheer, twisted, horrific agony. I cannot describe... Hello? <laughs> Who's this? Who? Give me that. It is the continuum. Get out of here. 777? Seven, seven, seven. The continuum responds by cell phone? <laughs> Any port in a storm. <laughs> Hello. Oh, how nice of you to call. I am delighted to hear from you. What? Yes? Yes, of course, it is me. Q. Good old Q. <laughs> what? You must be joking. Very well. 180-368045. <laughs> That's right, 45. I may sound different to you, but I am the same bon vivant I have always been. <laughs> this is ludicrous. She does not believe I am who I am. Here, take over. Think Cary Grant, Sean Connery. Oh, hell, just go to the top. Think me. Mm. <laughs> hey, baby, what's happening? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I feel cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel cool. Yeah. I'm just a bit hoarse today. Who was that person you were speaking to? Oh, that was Mr. Spock. <clears throat> Spock. S-P-O-C-K? No, 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 not, not doctor, no, 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 no. <laughs> Mr. Spock is a former science officer of Starship Enterprise. Enterprise. It's, 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 it's oh, forget it. It must be Betty. She runs the switchboard. Betty? Now say exactly what I tell you, and please keep in mind that we are mortally dependent on the success of this charade. You were a lot of laughs. <laughs> you ever considered hiring yourself out of kids' parties? No. Now repeat after me. Betty, you fox you. Betty, you fox you. It has been eons. It's been eons. We talked once about snorkeling in the Maldives, remember? <laughs> yeah. How about today, baby? Hmm? 
Carpe diem, as they say. I did not tell you to say that. I know a great little beach. Oh, yeah. No undertow. No people. No bathing suits. Tell her we need help. How do you know about that beach? It's in here. It's in your head. Please, do not go messing about with anything in my head. I have everything arranged just so. Relax. Just stay loose. I see no value in staying loose. Time is of the essence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm still here, baby. We yeah. need help. Ask her for help, you idiot. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but man... Give me the phone. Sure, 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 honey. It's okay. No, no, no. no. Take your time, baby. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not going anywhere. Do not hang up. <laughs> Great talking to you, too. Do not hang up. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Yeah. Do not hang up. Kisses. You just hung up. She said she had another call. But you just hung up. I did, I did, yeah. Calm down, will you? And how are we to get off this... Do you ever think of anyone but yourself? <laughs> I've done that my whole life, sweetheart. <laughs> but now that I'm you, I don't care a flying fig about anybody but me. <laughs> I do not know what is worse. You with the bad grammar and the new age stuff. Or me, thinking like you. Is it really that terrible, being Spock? Well, you get these waves of negativity. But once you get used to them, it's kind of trippy. <laughs> I mean, even though you have to constantly be codifying, stratifying, ratifying, qualifying, it's still fascinating. <laughs> And being in your head should be illegal. <laughs> you have power you haven't even tapped yet. Lots of switches and dials and chromey brain parts. Yowza! <laughs> the things you can do with the drop of a hat. It is impressive, isn't it? But there is one thing that really bothers me. Please, unburden yourself. Tell me. This whole experience has awakened me to the realization that, well, if I disappeared, if I dried up and blew away... No one would care. Not a footprint in the sand. Not a memorial plaque. I wouldn't even leave a mild rash. Oh, hey, hey. Memorial plaque is something people walk on. I don't think you understand. I am constantly having to create my own party. I am always buying the whistles and the hats. The fact is no one needs me. Not like you. Everyone needs Spock. Old civilizations need Spock. Even whales count on Spock. Mm. <laughs> Have you sensed the pointlessness of being me? Pointless, schmointless is positively, absolutely addictive. I have never been flippant, devil-may-care, spontaneous, effervescent. I have never been naughty. I have never dived off a rock into water just for the pure sensation. Being you is absolutely delicious. I just flirted with Betty. <laughs> How about that? Wow! <laughs> Betty is a million years old and looks every day of it. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I enjoyed the experience. And I enjoy the experience of being you. The ability to contemplate, to ponder, to be still. All these things have eluded me. Even death. Believe it or not, I think it adds poignancy to life. Death is the ultimate experience. The very reason for living, in fact. Did Betty say anything? Pertinent to our situation, I mean? She said she might call back after her break. Oh, excellent. Really helpful. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I, an eternal being, would be facing the end of the pier, the last hurrah. Imagine that. Oh, Look, if you're going to be me, please don't get maudlin. A person can change, you know. The point is moot. <laughs> to think that I am leaving all this behind. The travel, the food, the women. Actually, I have a confession to make. Oh, oh, I, uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I don't know. If I, I am bispecial. <laughs> Thank you.
coming out of the closet right now, no. <laughs> to sleep, perchance to dream. Give me a hug. No, 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 I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think so. Oh, just a little one until the curtain falls. Uh, look, at, look at the bright side. You have for a brief moment been able to get in touch with yourself. For the first time in your million, billion year life, you've had an epiphany. It's, 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 it's sad. Yeah, yeah, it's sad that we can't experience this for very much longer, but it was a thrilling sensation while it lasted. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, but it's still very, very sad. I feel like a dying man who has not read Shakespeare, and it is too late. Oh, I feel like an actor who studied Shakespeare all his life and never performed it. Look, I can see the earth clearly now. We're entering the encounter tangency. The encounter tangency? Who talks like that? <laughs> you do. Oh. Ah, oh, me. Trillions of years of superficiality. Ten minutes of introspection. Doesn't seem quite fair. Hey, how do you think I feel? Tell me about Betty again. <laughs> One minute, 58 seconds. 57, mm. 56. Mm. Answer it, quick. Hello? Yes, Betty? Oh, not Betty? What can I do for you? Uh, Petunia? Petunia? She wants to know if we know why we're here. I don't know any Petunia. Petunia, are you sure you have the right number? 49, 47, we're kind of 40, preoccupied 46, here. 45. She says we've incurred a violation. A violation? A violation for what? A violation for what? Violation 165, unauthorized dislocation of the main temporal sequence. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. She says ignorance of the law is no excuse. <laughs> you tell her she can shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Did you hear that? Yeah. She wants to know which sun. <laughs> Who is this person? She says the punishment for violation 165 is a re-injection into the seventh temporal thread. You know, if you had paid for caller ID, we wouldn't have to be dealing with this nutcase. She says she pulled us over for diverting the asteroid. She wants to know if we've learned our lesson yet. Hmm? Our lesson? Our lesson? Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely, gratefully received. Yes, yes, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> Don't eat shellfish on months other than those ending in the letter R. Right. No, right. this is serious. This is very serious. Give me the phone. All right. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes, we understand. We have learned our lesson. It is the essential obligation of beings, particularly super beings, to observe the cardinal laws of the universe. Ah, yes. Especially Twelve, pertaining 11, to the asteroid. Ten. I, I, will you be quiet? Nine. No, no, not you. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Oh, my. I had no idea. But I suspected. Eight. Thank you. Seven. Thank you, Petunia. Six. Thank you, thank you. Five. Give me your hand. Four. Give me your Not hand. Not again, no, no, no. Just no. give me your hand. No! Oh, 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 uncle, 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 oh, oh. We are home! We're home! Yeah, baby! So familiar, so comfy, so deliciously familiarly me! Woo! I'm back, Spock! Are you back? I am. But my hand... How do you feel? I never experienced LSD. But I imagine the trip I just took would be the closest approximation. Look out there! I mean, look at them all, those faces! What do you think? I am withholding my opinion. It is not Vulcan to spew. I could kiss them, each and every one of them. The amount of germs exchanged in a single kiss is incalculable. Multiply one kiss by several hundred... Oh, Spock, I love you. You know, why don't you come here and give me a big fat smooch? Taking into account your recent personal revelations, I would really rather not. <laughs> no, no.
My, the hour steals on. Spock, that is a dreadful habit. When I was you, I couldn't stop myself from checking that watch every 30 seconds. But now, everything has changed. Changed? Yes, changed. We're not alone. That is apparent. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about them. We're not alone. Don't you realize what that means? No. All these eons, the weight of the universe on Q's shoulders, and now... Now? What? I always suspected, but I never thought the message would come through me. Which message? Burning bush. Burning bush? What are you talking about? Petunia. What about Petunia? She's not a Q. No. So? She's... No, I'm not allowed to say. Please. Spit it out, man. No, I told you I'm not allowed to say You have piqued my interest. Yes. Yes. I am personally pleased to have piqued your interest. What are you alluding to? How many pecks of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? <laughs> one. No. I am quite certain it was one. Yes, it is one. But that's not my point. It is not? No, no. Suffice it to say, L-M-N-O... P... Comes before Q. Oh. Oh. Fascinating. Now there would be an autograph to get. Mm. <laughs> fascinating, yes. You know, Spock, you gotta come up with a better word than fascinating. Hmm. Cool? <laughs> Is cool preferable? Much better. Oh, good. It is not my aim to give offense. You mean you care what I think? That is an acceptable inference on your part. Well, I'm delighted to hear it. How about, uh, how about you and I go out for a couple of lattes? In a moment. Allow me a final comment to these good people. Oh, be my guest. <laughs> as you stand atop the precipice of the new century, as ambassadors to the future, as insurers of security, steadfastness, and the common weal, as emperors to the air, the sea, the cosmos, it is your collective commitment, your mandate, your legacy, your entitlement, your human responsibility, your imperative. What he's trying to say is this. Do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can. In all the places you can. At all the times you can. To all the people you can. For as long as you can. And love will steer the stars. Can we go now? I suppose. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> I am not Louis. <laughs> Say goodnight, Spock. Good night. Spock vs. Q, the sequel, is published by Simon & Schuster Audio. It was written by Cecilia Fannin and performed by Leonard Nimoy and John DeLancey. Post-production services were provided by Jeff Howell and John Chaminsky. This performance was recorded live at the Heartland Theater in Kansas City, Missouri, under the generous auspices of Dave Scott, Slanted Fedora Productions. For information regarding other Alien Voices productions, visit the audio book section of your favorite bookstore or find us at the Alien Voices website at alienvoices.com. Alien Voices is a Leonard Nimoy, John DeLancey enterprise.